Greetings fellow ukuleleans, Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with a new ukulele tutorial. I'd like to do a song by special request. This one is called Without You by Harry Nilsson. It was actually written by Badfinger, the guy Pete Ham from Badfinger back in the early 70s. But Harry Nilsson had a pretty big hit with it. It was on the radio when I was a kid and was kind of all over the place. So I would consider uh, Harry Nilsson's version the one to, to copy. And then Mariah Carey did a version, I think it was 1995, something like that, mid-90s. She did a cover version of it. Uh, real epic ballad, real kind of uh, emotional song with a lot of feeling in it. But the chords are interesting, and this is a continuation of our discussion last week of taking simple chords and modifying them in very simple ways, easy to do ways, that make them sound more sophisticated. A C add nine. So that changes the sound a little bit, and it makes a little bit of movement. It takes it from a one chord chord progression to a two chord. And Harry Nilsson does this throughout the song on many of the chords. He uh, does those moving voices. I'm not going to do each and every one of those. I'm just going to show you uh, a couple of them. But let's learn the song. That was the request that I had from a uh, viewer on YouTube was uh, show us without you. So here it is. Without further ado, it starts on that riff from a C sus2 or C add 9 to a C twice. Then he gets into the singing, the verse. So that's the whole piano intro. He does it way up high. It's uh, more like Show you both of those ways. I actually prefer the lower way, but um, I'm picking my C and E strings first with my index and middle with that uh, C sus2 or C add 9, and then I hit my G string with my thumb like this. And I take that note away to reveal just a normal C chord, and I pick it the same way. So it's a very piano-like approach. That's like the equivalent of the right followed by the left hands of the piano. But we're just doing that on the ukulele using finger style. So again, index and middle right hand fingers are picking the E and C strings. Thumb is picking the G. That's the closest we're going to get to a sounding like a piano. All right, so you've got that. And then he starts singing. So here's the whole verse. C. E minor goes to D minor, then E7, A minor, A minor 7 to D. Now back to C, and then so that part. Um, is a little bit hard to replicate what he does on the piano, but there's a couple of choices. You can do a chord called G sus2 to G. You could do a G7 sus2 to G7. Could just play G7. There's a bunch of ways to recreate that part. Um, do what you think sounds best. It's uh, a little tricky. It's a very unique pianistic kind of chord that uh, it's hard to find on the on the ukulele. But that's about as close as we're going to come. Some variation of G and or G7 will fit the bill. In fact, when you look at a song sheet on the internet, like I will link to down below. Um, the song sheets all say G changing to G7. They say to go like this. Yes, it should. That'll work. That's an oversimplification, but that, that might, to your ear, that might sound better. So that would be perfectly okay. Does another verse, all the same chords again, and then the big dramatic chorus, which, of course, he sings in his regular voice uh, for the first time or two, but by the end of the song, he's really belting. He's like emoting. It's a quite an emotional uh, 
breakup song and um, real different from the way people uh, tend to sing today. None of that mumbly stuff, none of that, um, oh, I won't mention names, I won't name names, but there's a very popular woman singer out there today whose name, it rhymes with uh, Hilly Stylish, <laughs> and that's all I'll say, there's a certain way of singing with, that's kind of mumbling, and he's not doing that, he's just like belting, and so this is one of those classic belting kind of ballads that you had back then, piano-based composers, singer-songwriters that did that sort of thing back then. All right, so here's the chorus without further ado. We have C, A minor, D minor, G7. That's a one, six, two, five. That's a chord progression we've talked about a lot. You see it in jazz, see it in rock, see it all over the place, but it's really easy. It's just C, A minor, D minor, and then G7. And then again. settles back down for the so the crescendo you know it really builds in dynamic for that chorus and eventually orchestras come in and it's big big huge production but it uh, always seems to drop back down to a just a piano with a little bit of backing um, bass and all of that really good bass part by the way um, on the verses so quiet verses loud choruses really uh, interesting study in dynamics if you're a songwriter that's a really good template to uh, to go by and uh, use in your own songwriting. All right, so again, these are really easy chords, but we did have that um, cool piano-like uh, thing that we did with our C add nine to C. And like I said, Harry Nilsson does a lot of that stuff on many of the chords of the song. But we're going to not learn every little nook and cranny that he does on the piano. That would involve some uh, pretty heavy duty stretches and some chords that would take this out of the realm of easy. And I do want to keep this easy and brief, so I'm going to end it just about here. But I did want to say that I will leave a link to the song sheet below, just with a caveat that you're going to have to alter the song sheet. There's um, not a single one on the internet that's exactly right. Um, unless you can find the sheet music to the song, if you can go to a music store or an online music publisher and um, purchase the sheet music, then you'll get the real deal. You'll be reading music and looking at exactly what he played on the piano. But short of that, you're going to have to settle for very over, overly simplified uh, song sheets like we find on the internet these days that have chord diagrams, chord names, and lyrics only. No musical information whatsoever. Maybe a suggested strum or something. Um, by the way, I should, before we go, I should tell you about the strum I'm doing. That, that one especially that I do in the chorus. Notice how I'm leaving a lot of space between my first strum and my second strum. I wait. I actually am just doing a quarter note there. One, two. Then I do a quick down up. Almost like the calypso strum. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to do something familiar and easy, just do the calypso strum there. That would work. So basically my strum is just a variation of the calypso. do it in real slow motion so you can see it. I won't explain it. I'll just let you watch it and listen to it and see if you can grab it this way. Notice how many of those chords begin on an up. That is syncopation. That's stuff happening on the offbeat, on the up strum. So 
so there you have it, ukulele people, a great classic ballad from the early 70s. And I hope that you liked it. I hope you subscribe, click like, click the notify bell, and visit me over on Patreon to get all kinds of free stuff, but also some things that are Patreon exclusives that if you are a patron, you have access to just reams and reams of great um, stuff that I've put up over the years. So I appreciate you watching, and take it easy. Bye-bye, ukulele people.